Welcome back. Look, I hope you've had a chance to actually try that problem that I gave you last time uh, using Kirchhoff's voltage law to find the current IS and then find the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the inductor. All right, let's go ahead and work the problem together. IS is defined in this direction, so the polarity across this resistor will be plus minus consistent with that current direction. Now let's look at the inductor. Once again, the current is in this direction, so to be consistent with that current direction, we have a polarity across our inductor as plus minus. So what we can do now is we can take a loop, okay, and we can basically sum the voltages around that loop. So this is Kirchhoff's voltage law, that the sum of the voltages around this loop would be equal to zero. So we're going to start at this point here. Now just a little convention. If we go up in polarity as we go around the loop, we're going to call it positive. And if we go from, let's say, a plus to a minus, we're dropping in voltage, and we're going to call that a negative as we go around that loop. All right. So what we have is then coming here, we go up, plus, minus, plus, 10 volts. We come across our next component, we're dropping because it's a plus minus, and we said that's a minus IS times that 3K. Now to our last element, once again it's going plus minus, we're dropping in polarity, we call that a minus, and that's IS times ZL for that voltage, and this is all equal to zero. All right, let's see if we can collect the IS terms. So we have 10 minus IS, open up a bracket, 3K plus ZL, close the bracket, all is equal to zero. All right, now if we divide, or rather if we take this part over here, over to the other side, we have what? 10 is equal to IS, open up our bracket, 3K plus ZL, like so. Now, if we divide both sides by this term here, so that's 10 divided by 3K plus ZL is equal to IS. What we have to do now is substitute for the ZL. So we'll rewrite that. That's 10 divided by 3K uh, ZL is what? That's a J4K, so that's plus J4K. All right, now to go any further, we need to convert that into polar form, and you remember we did that really last time. But once again, we can quickly do that. We can say that the magnitude, okay, is simply equal to 3K squared, so that's 3K squared plus 4K squared, and then we take the square root of it, and so that magnitude is equal to 5K. The uh, angle is really tan theta being equal to the 4K divided by the 3K. So therefore, theta is going to be equal to my inverse tangent of that 4K over the 3K, which gives me a theta that is equal to 53 point one three degrees. All right, let's put that information into here. So we've got IS is then equal to 10, and that is divided by, in polar form, this is what? 5K at an angle of 53.13 uh, degrees. So therefore, let's perform that division. IS then is equal to 10 divided by 5K, which is two milliamps, and then bring this angle up to the top over here. This is a minus 53.13 degrees. And if you remember from the, um, the first part of our discussion here uh, in the previous video, uh, that's exactly the current that we had before.
Having found IS, we can now evaluate the voltage across the resistor. We're going to call that VR. So VR is simply going to be equal to that current IS multiplied by that 3K. And that, of course, is equal to really 2 milliamps, angle minus 53.13 uh, multiplied by 3K. And so that gives us a voltage across that resistor, which is, what is that, 2 times 3? That's 6 volts at an angle of minus 53.13 degrees. Okay, the voltage across the inductor then, once again, it's IS, so we'll call that VL. It's IS multiplied by the impedance of the inductor, which was ZL, and so that's equal to what? 2 milliamps at an angle of minus 53.13, uh, and that's multiplied by the inductor. We'll write that in polar form, which is 4K, at an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so what does that actually equal? You've got two milliamps multiplied by 4K, so that is simply gonna be equal to eight, and my angle over here is I've got a minus 53.13 and a plus 90, and so I take that away from that, it gives me an angle of 36.87 uh, degrees. And so you'll note, once again, the voltage across the inductor, okay, is ahead of the current through it by an angle of 90 degrees. Now look, something that you might find a little bit useful here, which relates to inductors and capacitors, is this, civil, okay? Let's think about this little way of remembering some things here. We could say that in an inductor, represented by L, the voltage leads the current, whereas in a capacitor, the current leads the voltage. So look, that might be something useful to uh, just, just keep in mind to perhaps help you as, you as you think about these kinds of circuits. Look, I hope you got that right, and I'll see you next time. <music>